Okay, so uh, I would like to say thank you for coming <laughs> and hello to everyone. So basically, um, I will talk about um, four things. First, I will uh, tell you a story about how we started the Red Pitaya, uh, where this idea come from, and why it, the board is built like it is. Uh, then I will say something about the vibrant community, which I believe the the ham radio uh, operators are the part of it, and this community is growing, and we really love to see how many things are people doing with this board. Um, then I will talk about uh, our new products, let's say, for uh, ham radio operators that we are building together with um, a radio club from uh, Munich, the Charlie 25, uh, which is a great team, and we, we, we love to work with them. And uh, I will end with uh, saying something about next generation of Red Pitaya and so on. Uh, and then the next presentation, Edwin will talk about technical stuff like measurements and so on. He did with the, with the latest things we, we did, we built. So basically the idea for the Red Pitaya uh, came from universities because uh, we were looking for basically teachers were and professors were looking for a solution that would uh, be very cost effective so that anybody, every student could, uh, let's say, buy and uh, take home with him and that would, let's say, replace the instruments for measurements that uh, usually, you know, when you're in the university, they don't let you to touch all the things and so on because you will break something and so on. So they don't let you to play with it. So we wanted to build something small, simple to, to, to enable uh, students to gain more knowledge from electrical engineering in general. Um, so uh, we had to do it some, something that is very simple to use. So that's why we decided to, to go with the web user interface so that basically there is no need to, to spend a lot of time to install the software on the computer and all these things that take time and that it also works with all uh, platforms like Windows, Mac, Linux. Uh, there was a, a need for, uh, let's say, possibility to control it remotely, you know, so that uh, they can do some lab material from home. Uh, so basically, that's why we built a device that it's uh, network attached. And uh, we decided to go with open source software code so that they can play with it, develop things, change things, learn how things are built. And uh, we, there was also a need for, you know, like newer technologies. So like uh, taking something that is fresh and at that time this was Zinc processor which combines the FPGA and CPU for the first time. Uh, so we decided to go with that. Um, so basically, we took the same approach as it's for, let's say, smartphones, basically to have one hardware that can be reconfigurable and can replace many other things, even if it does not replace them like, you know, a smartphone will never be a very good uh, thing to make photos. I mean, it's not a professional p piece of equipment, but it's just good enough that you can use it and so on. So, uh, so this is some kind of similar, you know. So let's... For example, uh, what we did is uh, the board basically, so with uh, this uh, uh, FPGA and CPU processor Zinc with, some, with two uh, ADC um, fast uh, analog inputs that can sample at 125 mega samples per second, uh, 14 bits, and two outputs that can generate signals with 125 mega samples per second. And on top of that, so if this is our smartphone, we build applications that turns this board into oscilloscope, spectrum analyzer, logic analyzer, LCR meter. So many, many applications. Uh, we also did uh, build the application marketplace so that other users could build applications uh, and put them on the market to let other community members to install them on their Red Pitaya. So basically, uh, same approach as for the smartphone, let's say. And uh, this thing became very popular at universities and so on. So at the moment, we have a community that is like 30,000 people using it. But what we didn't expect is that the thing will go in many other directions. So basically, 
when we launched the board, we noticed that also industry uh, started uh, buying the boards and they use them for test and measurement things, uh, for some sort of automated tests. Uh, some startups and companies also um, use it as OEM products, so they put it in their own uh, devices, their own products. Uh, the reason for that, I think, mainly is because the board is well tested. I mean, if you have 30,000 of boards on the market, then this means your hardware is for sure working very well. So if you want to develop your own board, you will probably spend two years at least for testing it to this level. Uh, so, so here you can see, you can recognize, uh, a second, you see here is directly Red Pitaya inside this device. And there is some um, sensor, very innovative thing for uh, measuring the current in the, in the cars with the electric motors. And they are basically testing it with Red Pitaya. So uh, they replaced the traditional equipment, let's say. They put it on the network and built some test procedure for it. And uh, especially research institutions, very interesting projects. I will show you a few of them just to let you know about them. And of course, ham radio, many things going on. And uh, also makers, I think this is uh, something to measure the earthquakes with um, apart from uh, CD-ROM. Uh, so the, 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 the part that um, controls the focus of the lens, they put it in the loop with some PhD controller and so crazy. Okay, so there are some interesting projects you can find on the, on the web. So this is from Princeton University USA. They did the nuclear warhead verification. Um, then here in Germany, uh, this is very interesting thing, it's magnetic induction tomography, so they use it to, let's say, for example, you see this here, is, uh, these are pipes, uh, and uh, you can see anomalies in the structure when you produce them. So this is how you do, do the quality control, and this is the device that is used for such testing, and um, they basically decrease, I mean, the, the price is much lower compared with uh, let's say, NI uh, equipment and so on. So, so they decided to, to build it with Red Pitayas. And uh, what is interesting with this thing that you can also, with this method, you can also um, observe the, let's say, fruit like bananas. And you can tell for each day when they are getting older, <laughs> you can see this in measurements. So it's really interesting stuff. Um, then this is, a okay, so this is for, let's say this is a startup from, from US, uh, founded by US government, working on cybersecurity, they're using Red Pitaya to basically observe the power fingerprinting of uh, devices. They, I think they are, th th at the moment, they are very focused on PLCs and some industrial stuff. So what they do, they observe device for one month, which is doing pretty, I would say, some standard operations which are, which are going on and on the same way. And if they find uh, anomaly in the uh, basically the, the power consumption of this device, or uh, when they observe the electromagnetic uh, emissions, uh, they basically compare this data and they trigger an alert. Okay, so it's a uh, lot of processing, a lot of learning, lo long learning curve, but it's, um, the thing is that is, uh, the system is not connected with the, with, the, with the system it is observing. This is very important, so it's completely separated. That's, um, then there is another interesting uh, project, basically, where they are having, uh, just a second, I will show you, so. Here is, um, it's, a, it's a grid, basically, of red pitayas, and they are transmitting signals to ionosphere and measuring what is coming back, and based on that, they are basically doing 4D imaging of the Earth's atmosphere. So this is from Bo Boston University, also very interesting product. Um, uh, project so uh, so for the ham uh, radio uh, part why red pitaya became so popular on this part I think that all the credits goes to to power the min because uh, without him making the the FPGA image and all the software he did I think nobody I, I think I wouldn't be here today and talking about these things so all the credit goes to him I'm I wrote him an email but he said that he's not able to come here so it's a pity, but I hope that one year he will uh, come here. 
so the things he did, I believe you're mostly familiar that basically he uh, did a firmware and everything for RedPitaya to, to make it compatible with HPSDR uh, so that RedPitaya can be used for, for SDR. Then the vector network analyzer, very nice and good working stuff. And uh, CV schema and Wix single propagation reporter can also be used with RedPitaya because, because of him. Um, so, uh, last year, basically, the we were here, uh, we started collaborating with the, with the German ham radio club C25, as I mentioned before. And uh, what we did is uh, SDR transceiver module, uh, basically covering bands from 160 to 10 meters, uh, with uh, basically, okay, so here is a transformer to, because Red Pitaya was initially not meant to, to, to be uh, like 50 ohm uh, input, has 50 ohm input, so here is a transformer that basically uh, balances this load from 50 ohms to, to uh, high impedance. Uh, and uh, inside of this, there is uh, basically just a second, okay. So here we have uh, Eric's chain, so another low pass filter, attenuators, and uh, amplifiers. And uh, this goes to basically to antenna, where you can select two antennas. There is also option to uh, put some pre selectors in between here. And uh, uh, output goes to some uh, linear amplifier. Then we have 10 watt power amplifier and basically um, filters for each band. Um, and uh, this thing can be also upgraded with some pre selectors. Uh, so that's why there is another bus left and also this can be then attached to these press selectors. Um, uh, we did, uh, we, <coughs> we, use, we are using the power SDR version. We did some sp special edition of it. There were some reasons, you know, that the thing uh, starts application on Red Pitaya and so on. So we are not trying to get away from the <laughs> power SDR. Uh, open source software, but the things were that there were some changes that uh, we'd like to have inside this thing. So uh, then uh, the thing that followed is uh, basically the HamLab, where we have this module inside and we have all the switching to make it uh, simple to use for all the instruments also. So you can use it as a stereoscope, spectrum analyzer, signal generator, all the features are the features that basically Red Pitaya has with some improvements uh, because of additional hardware. And this, things, this thing also has uh, audio codecs so you can directly connect the microphone here. You have lower latency, the key, the phones. Uh, on the back here is Red Pitaya so you can put the ethernet there. Uh, power supply, two antennas, and for pre-selectors external, and uh, additional uh, receiver, and also the, the output. Um, so here's another picture of it. And more specifications, basically. So Eric's frequency range takes all the bands that we are supporting. For the six meters, the output of Red Pitaya has too much distortions. Um, we did check the things about that, if this is caused by the output amplifier and so on, we replace it with a transformer. But it seems like it is done because of the processing in something in the software. Uh, so this will have to be observed and fixed. So at the moment, basically, to use six meters, uh, the hardware is ready, but we still need to fix these things on software. Anyhow, if you're using it with pre-selectors, this is already available because we are uh, sending the output signal through the pre-selectors of six meters to, to clean this stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically, this is about HamLab. Uh, the pre-selectors are, are just entering the production since we are having quite some problems <laughs> to tune them because they have so many parameters to, to set. And, uh, but the, the quality of these pre-selectors will be very, very, very good. Uh, so I can't wait that they will be available. And uh, basically this is uh, some prototypes we are building to 
to improve the things of the front end for ham radio and SDR stuff. So um, we are focused to on mostly on these things, like to get, of course, the 50 ohm input, the higher dynamic range, to have less crosstalk, uh, so that it will be possible to use the independent receivers and antenna diversity, to have less distortions, and uh, this is also something that we have in mind. So to have support for two and and four uh, meter uh, bands. So basically, uh, I would like to uh, invite you to our booth where we can discuss things. Uh, and uh, we have also a prize draw. So uh, if you go to our booth and you leave your name and some information, we will, uh, somebody will, will get a free SDR transceiver kit. Uh, so, this is it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.